Okay. Um, our lab and our last part of this unit is on titration. My brain eyeballs are getting very exhausted here. Um, I'm so but we have titrated before. We do that at the beginning of the year when we learn solution math and titration math. The math part of it really isn't going to change. Um, what's going to upgrade, because we're better now and smarter now, in our lab, yes, I'm definitely using colors today, so come grab them if you want them, is um, we are going to use a new piece of, two new pieces of equipment. We are going to use something called a drop counter. Remember, maybe not, but the first time we titrated, you actually had to like read the tube. This is called burette. Now you don't have to read it. This drop counter automatically will measure it for you. So it counts the number of drops, which it knows how many milliliters are in a drop. So it makes a graph for you. This is a pH probe. It's going to read the pH. I have the cover on it. Like when you actually use it, you have to take the cover off. You just can't let it dry out. It breaks them. So I'm just showing you with the cover on it. And instead of the flaps, it's just like two flaps to fit in the flaps. We're just going to use beakers. Okay. But everything else will be the same. Drew's going to set that up for you for Tuesday. So when we titrate, remember we have some kind of burette. We're going to draw it with the beaker because that's what we're doing now. Red sticks are pH probes today, obviously. That's not the baseball probe. The pH probe goes to a pH meter that's going to read pH. So in here we have some kind of solution. And in here we add it to do some kind of reaction. Just a reminder of vocabulary words, equivalence points. End points. And indicator. The equivalence point is the exact stoichiometric ratio it's like a big jump on the graph it's in the middle of the big jump I'm not sure we'll talk about that the end point is when the indicator changes color and we want it to happen right at the equivalence point And that's like our visual that it's the equivalence point. So it usually changes color one pass, one drop past it. The indicator updated stuff on this, the indicator, we're going to choose an indicator. With a pKa, pKa we learned yesterday. It's the negative log of the Ka. So everything has a Ka. It's the negative log of the Ka. With the pKa equal to the pH of the equivalence point. That's how we choose them. So phenyl thaline has a pKa of 7. So it changes color at 7, which is what I want it to do. Okay. So sixth grade math curriculum mostly makes me mad. It's all over the place. But one thing they did yesterday in the sixth grade math curriculum is they were like drawing graphs, like plotting graphs, and the teacher made them tell the story of the graph. So they had to say like, what was happening? She was walking forward, you know, kind of like physics, like when you learn how to do those graphs. That was like, oh my God, that's such a good idea because that is what you're going to have to do on the AP exam. They're going to give you a titration curve and you're going to have to tell the story of what's happening at each point. They use words like describe the species present at point B, but really you're just saying what's happening. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going to go today. This first graph is for a strong acid with a strong base. So what that means, those words mean that my strong acid, let's call it HCl, is in my beaker and my strong base is in my burette. 
let's call it sodium hydroxide. Red sticks are pH probes, obviously. The axes on our graph, and ours is going to be the same thing because we have that drop counter. The x axis is the milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. Okay? So, like it reads how much is dripping in. The y axis is going to be the pH from the red pH probe. Okay? So, it would make sense that if I didn't do anything yet, that my pH at the beginning is going to read really low. It's reading pure HCl. Lots of hydrogens. Nothing has happened yet. Okay, so remember, actually I want green. Remember what HCl means. That actually means hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Ions just means that they're letters with charges. Remember what NaOH actually means. It means sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So as I turn this on and I start adding the sodium hydroxide, a reaction is going to happen, right? The sodium hydroxide jumps into the hot tub, so I have these, I have already in the hot tub some hydrogen ions, and if I add hydroxide ions, what am I going to make? Water. Yesterday we learned with buffers that water does not change pH. Water doesn't change pH not because water is neutral, just because it's not in our math equation. The only thing that can change pH is H3O. So as the sodium hydroxide is jumping in the hot tub, all I'm doing is I'm making a bunch of water. Making water babies, making water babies, making water babies, making water babies, making water babies. Making water babies. My pH really doesn't change much because pH doesn't have anything to do with water. It is going to increase slightly, though, just because I'm also losing some of these hydrogens, right? They're turning into water. This is called the buffer region. And the story of what's happening is in the buffer region is this. I'm just making a bunch of water, making a bunch of water, making, I'm making salt water, making a bunch of water. Making a bunch of water. Okay, when the music starts, talk about what's in the beer at, what's in the beaker, what the pH probe reads, and the story of the buffer region. Ready, go. Okay. Gold star. Okay. All right. So, but then I get to the point that I add all the sodium hydroxides to the hot tub, and eventually I'm going to run out of hydrogen. Like, there are none left. Like, it's getting harder to find a hydrogen. It's getting harder to find a hydrogen. And there is no more. Gone. Did you hurt yourself quick in it? The center of this spike is called the equivalence point, right? The equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base is always going to be 7 because all we did was make a neutral salt. Neutral salt, trick question, pH is 7. I don't even have to do math to figure that out. Now I know ours is NaCl, but it could be any strong acid, strong base. They're always a neutral salt. So, also on a side note, we are going to choose an indicator with a pKa of 7 because I wanted to change color at 7 because the equivalence point is at 7 and the equivalence point is when I have no hydrogens to make no more water. So then my next drop is a whole bunch of hydroxide that don't have a hydrogen front. As soon 
as I don't have any hydrogens, my pH jumps up. Because it's a negative log of the hydrogen. Okay? When you make stars, please talk about the story of an equivalence point, what it means, how do I pick an indicator, and the second part of the graph as well. Ready? Go. Gold star? Hold on. What if I flip flopped it though, and instead I put my base down here and my acid up here? Red sticks or pH probes, obviously. So it would make sense that at time zero, I'm going to start just with a really high pH because it's just reading sodium hydroxide, right? But same game. I'm adding in H's and I'm adding in CL's. I got some sodiums and I got some hydroxide. The kids jump in the hot tub. And all I'm doing at the beginning is making water babies, making water babies, buffing, making water babies, buffing, making water babies, buffing. It's just hydrogens and hydroxides getting together. But then, oh no, no more hydroxide. They're all gone. They all made water babies. My equivalence point still is going to be seven inches flip flop upside down. So I'm going to choose an indicator, which happens to be phenylthaline. Phenylthaline has a pKa of seven. All I did was make a neutral salt. Trick question, pH is 7. I don't have to do any math for that. And then it would make sense that down here my pH is going to be really low because I have all of these hydrogens who do not have a hydroxide front. They're all gone. The music starts. Can you please tell a story of this graph? Why is it upside down? What is it called? Okay. So now let's draw our own graph. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to put a weak acid um, in the beaker. I'm just going to say coo, any coo. A strong base is going to be sodium hydroxide. So my x-axis is still going to be milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Red sticks are pH probes, obviously, so our y-axis is going to be pH. Weak acids. Weak acids have little Ka. They lie left. Their H3O beaker is like empty. They have teeny tiny Ka's. But that also means that they have big pKa's. Because P is the negative log, so it's opposite. Okay, the pKa shifts the graph up. So instead of the graph starting down here, like a strong acid would, who's only have a couple hydrogens? Their hydrogen beaker is like basically empty. So it's going to start shifted up. I am specifically saying due to a greater pKa because you will be given pKa values. But it's because they have like an empty H beaker. Okay. Hydroxide still going to jump in the hot tub. 
Hydroxide, though, is like, there's not that many of you. There's not that many of you. It's hard to make water, baby, because there's not that many of you. It goes up faster. It's not as flat. There's just not as many of them. Okay? So it starts higher. It's slopier. Oh, no. Ran out. No, there's none of you. This equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. The whole thing is shifted up. I'm making a basic salt. I'm not making a neutral salt anymore. I'm making a basic salt. I'm making <coughs> this basic salt. So my pH is going to be greater than 7. Choose an indicator. With pKa equal to the pH of the equivalence point. So if the equivalence point is at 8, i got to pick a different indicator. I can't use phenylphthalein anymore. I'm going to pick one with a pKa of 8. And then just pure hydroxide. No more hydrogens. Okay, tell the story of shifting, slopier lines, equivalence point greater than 7. Ready, go. So the next the next picture, mine's in color. I know yours isn't in color. But I need you to push some buttons for me. So get out to calculate. P oh I can't record all my own. PH equals I'm sorry, PKA equals the negative log of the KA. So if the Ka for the red line, yours is red line, is 10 to the negative 2. pKa equals negative log of 10 to the negative 2. Can you please push those buttons for me? It's a base 10. So what are you going to get? You get 2. pKa equals 2. PKA is important because it doesn't require a calculator, which means it's going to be on the non-calculator part. If I know my KA is times 10 to the negative 2, I know my PKA is 2. If I know my KA is times 10 to the negative 4th, I know my PKA is 4. And the higher the PKA, the upper it is. It shifts it up. And it shifts the equivalence point up. It shifts it all up. Okay? Indicators. We already did this. Choose. So PKA equals pH at equivalence point. You know how they suck at graphs and you have to like read it perfectly to get the right answer like on the exam? This is like one of those instances. Like, I would, like, fold the paper and get a straight edge out and, like, make it exact as exact as you can. So this would be a poor indicator because it changes color not at the equivalence point. Um, what's going to happen is they will give you a graph. You'll have to do a whole bunch of stuff with it. And then say, which indicator would you use? And they'll give you a long list of indicators and then PK. And you're going to want to choose one that changes color at the right PKA pH. Okay? And lastly, not lastly, almost lastly, polyprotic. Poly means many, protic means protons. We learn that protons is really a hydrogen. When I have an acid that has more than one hydrogen, like H3PO4, 
going to lose them one at a time. And each time it loses one, it creates an equivalent. And an equivalence point. And there would be another one for that third. Okay. So these graphs have three different equivalence points, one for each of those hydrogens being lost. You won't have to do math or anything for these. You have to All right, what the math actually is. This is what our lab is going to be. I can find the pH, I'm sorry, I can find the Ka of an acid by looking at the graph, and it's called half titration or half equivalence. half equivalence point, the pH equals the pKa of the acid. Because of buffers. Yesterday we learned the math of buffers. Buffer, buffer math is pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. At the half equivalence point, the concentration of the base is the same as the acid. So it's like putting in 1 over 1. Log of 1 is 0. Like the math log of one is zero. So then it equals our pKa. So let's talk about how to get it. Our equivalence point is here at 25. 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. So our half equivalence point is 12.5. So I'm going to go to my 12.5. In my buffer region, making water babies, so I can use my buffer equation, at 12.5, my pH is 4. That means that's my pKa, because my ratio would be 1 to 1, which equals 0, so pH equals pKa. pKa equals negative log of the Ka. To undo log, it's 10. And then I can look on dinosaur to see what acid it is. It's like a shortcut to do the unknown. I just have one sample problem for you to do quick. It's not in there. It'll be in there next week. Yeah. You just look at this graph, please, and see. If you can figure out what the K is with your battle. 